Wisconsin Eye is at the Slinger Public Library interviewing the Republicans who are in the December 19th primary, a special election in the 58th Assembly District. Rick Gundrum of Slinger is one of those candidates. Mr. Gundrum, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. It's great to be here. How long have you lived in the 58th? Um, I've lived in the 58th uh, a good portion of my uh, entire life. There was a time when I was outside of the county and outside of the state because of uh, my job, but um, moved to Slinger here in, in uh, two, uh, 25 years ago, 1992, back in the 19s. Yes. <laughs> Way back. Uh, but uh, was born in Neno, Wisconsin, which is a little hamlet on the uh, northeast corner of the county uh, on the family farm that my great-grandfather had settled in. Uh, my great-great-grandfather goes back to um, 1845 when he settled here. So our uh, family has deep roots, five generations uh, in Washington County and in this area. And you've been a member of the Washington County Board for how long and how long as chair? Uh, twelve years, uh, well, twelve years on the board, two years uh, finishing up my second year on the first term as County Board Chairman. Then you have a knowledge of how state government in Madison treats county government. Correct. Does it put on too many mandates? Um, well, let's let's start with one issue. Let's talk the sure. transportation funding. Sure. That delayed the state budget. Correct. As a local official, and as obviously someone who uses the roads, mm -hmm. what's the real answer to long-term funding of highways, sir? Well, uh, I don't think a tax is the way we want to go. Especially, uh, I won't support that coming from one of the reddest counties in the state. Um, and I've always fought real hard to keep the line on taxes to you know lower them or hold them without negatively impacting uh, core services for our citizens. And I'm very uh, proud to say that in the last four years we've continued to drop the tax rate, and it's at the lowest it's been in almost uh, 100 years, and our tax levy is the lowest it's been in 10 years. So, and again, we have not uh, impacted any negative impact on any of the services we provide our, our citizens. Um, so I think a better way of um, funding the transportation fund, uh, there are several ways, but uh, using the example that we have at Washington County, we, we brought in a, a program called Priority Based Budgeting, which helped us drill in, down and peel off layers and find out that, well, here are duplications of services that we, you know, we don't need to have duplication here and there and everywhere else. Those types of things we found and were able to, to fix. And I'm, I'm sure uh, that you'd find that same thing at the uh, state and federal level because of all the regulations and mandates and the, uh, the projects in general, highway projects, um, take m way too long to be completed from concept to design to completion because it goes through so many layers of bureaucracy and it drags down the process costing more money also added expense because you've got some of the same people duplicating uh, the, the service that they're providing for the, for the project. Two other possibilities. Is Washington County considered a wheel tax? Uh, it, the topic has come up, but we've emphatically said absolutely not. We're not going there. Okay. And how about tolling? No. 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 Okay. No. Um, also, at the state level, I know that some of the mega projects that they had to borrow for, those uh, borrowings are starting to uh, be uh, completed, paid off. So there will be more monies available uh, from you know, that we're going to pay off uh, the, the debt uh, that I think could be used to send back to the local communities to help them get their infrastructure up. Because roads are very important, uh, obviously, and they need to be safe. That's the, the, the number one priority. But you know, you got to keep maintaining the infrastructure and um, doing upgrades when necessary. The Assembly and the Senate recently approved the $3 billion in uh, incentives for Foxconn, mm -hmm. um, largest economic development financial aid package in the history of America. Would you have voted for it? Yes, I would have. Uh, why? why? Well, because it's an investment in the future. Uh, jobs, uh, businesses will uh, evolve around that, not just Foxconn, but the supply chains, um, you know, and as more people uh, come to work, they'll need a place to live. It will increase your, your, your tax base. Uh, we'll also encourage more business development from the retail side. And, and uh, I know already, uh, I've heard that um, there are companies, businesses, uh, inquiring about available land uh, here in uh, Washington County or available space uh, buildings uh, that will be part of the supply chain or, um, uh, or help supply part of the supply chain, you know, for Foxconn. 
Washington County is then already seeing seeing economic development signs. Yeah, as a result uh, in, of inquiries. Yes, and um, and also too, there'll be other companies that will expand because because of it that aren't tied to uh, Foxconn. Representative Brooks from this area and Senator Strobel are active in the uh, debate over the dark star controversy. Yes. Whether judges should be stopped from continuing to value dark or closed large retail stores uh, at lesser than, than open ones. Um, your position, that they've got two bills on that. Could, sure. could, could you support them? Yes, I could. Um, in fact, West Bend alone has several lawsuits pending. Uh, and I, I just don't think it's right, and I, it's, a, it's a loophole whether some people don't think it is. I, I'm going to call it a loophole um, to make it uh, simple for me to explain. But um, the playing field needs to be level. As a homeowner, as uh, anyone else that owns a home in this county, in this state, we pay our fair share of taxes and uh, for the property, and to have it more dumped onto us to pick up the, the, the difference that's left because of lower taxes being paid by uh, actual retailers or stores that are operating mm -hmm. um, is not fair. Okay. Um, there are two bills pending that would uh, basically outlaw the research on fetal tissue from elective abortions. Uh, your position on that issue? Um, I am pro-life. Uh, I do not um, support uh, induced abortions at all. Um, if it's by natural causes for like a stillbirth, um, or a miscarriage, then that's what I would support for using for research, but not, you know, um, aborting unnaturally uh, induced to use for research. Three Republican representatives have a bill that would lower the drinking age to 19 if we don't lose $53 million a year in federal highway funds. Your position? Well, I think it's, it's worth a discussion. 19-year-olds um, uh, are treated as adults, just like 59 year olds are um, they have you know they have the right to vote they uh, can be drafted if we had a draft they have uh, they can make uh, take out loans to pay for expenses um, they can sign contracts so they can do anything that uh, any other adult could do and uh, other adults too have to drink uh, responsibly uh, otherwise they pay the consequences through the the laws that we have and the I cannot see why a 19-year-old can't do that, be treated the same way. Uh, they're out of high school. I, I don't think it should be lower than 19 because you don't want to create a problem in the high schools. So you could support that if we didn't lose the federal if funds? If we didn't lose the federal funds. If we funds. didn't. Right. Okay. Um, when you announced, you said there are three main issues. We've talked about taxes. We've talked about transportation. Opioid addiction. Talk to me about how you would fight that scourge. Well, um, there's a, a, a number of ways that it can be, be fought. Um, uh, first off, um, uh, stricter laws uh, for the uh, pharmaceutical companies that are manufacturing um, so that when, uh, if they don't follow these laws, they, they uh, are fined or, or, or whatever, you know, uh, treated uh, the way they should be treated for, for uh, creating this problem. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, better education, uh, you know, if you can keep educating and educating, uh, eventually I think you can, you can get to the, to, to the point where people are going to realize that let's not, you know, get ourselves involved with that. Um, however, unfortunately, the people that have already become addicted, that's, that's a challenge and that's, that's going to take a lot of, um, a lot of uh, money uh, to, to, you know, cure those situations and keep them cured. Uh, but uh, I think it can be done. Uh, uh, Washington County is one of those that has sued the pharmaceutical industry, correct? Correct. correct. What's the logic there? Uh, is there, and what type of costs has Washington County incurred as a result of this opiate and well, her I, heroin addiction? Well, I don't have the exact uh, dollar figures, but uh, there's a, more than just um, treating someone and that, having that cost involved and hospitalizing. Uh, You've got law enforcement involved uh, because sometimes, uh, many times, crimes are committed to get the money to, to buy the, uh, the drugs. Um, you have um, uh, uh, the counseling that needs to go with that and, you know, the programs that get set up to make sure that they're staying on track and, and, and actually being cured. Uh, all these things add up and uh, plus the man hours, not just the medicines that you need. Um, and, and the impact it has on families.
it's a, you know, a very tragic, serious problem. Um, as far as the lawsuit, um, the lawsuit is taking the stand that Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical companies, um, did not market um, the um, product, the medicine, uh, in a proper way. They were unethical about it, and um, you know, uh, people bought into it. And now that doctors uh, on the, the local scene, I'm going to say, uh, that uh, surgeons that treat patients uh, are, are aware of the problem and are now finding other ways to um, uh, have uh, pain control medicines through either more ibuprofen or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, where before it was like, well, it's the wonder drug just here. How many do you need? I'll get you some more. You know. um, are, do Washington County taxpayers, are they asking how much of their tax money is going to go to this lawsuit? Uh, the lawsuit will not cost us any money. Um, the law firm uh, has, um, you know, reached out to other counties as well. And at the time when we joined in on the lawsuit, there were 28 counties total. I'm sure that list has grown. And it's not just inside the county. There are counties outside of the uh, uh, state of Wisconsin that are, are getting involved in this as well. But the uh, law firm is picking up the cost and uh, getting a percentage of, uh, of the final uh, allotment if there is a judgment ruled in our favor. If not, no expense to the counties. No expense. Is it is it comparable to the tobacco lawsuit and the settlement from like, what, yes. 15 years ago? V very similar from what I've been told. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, the lawyers representing Washington County, have they given any estimate of how long it's going to take to resolve uh, this? Well, they told us it's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> it, it, you know, the one gentleman said I may have uh, gray hair or I may not have any hair by the time this comes to fruition, if it does, um, if it gets settled. Um, why are all the counties, including Washington counties, filing separate lawsuits? That was the recommendation from this law firm. And actually, it's several law firms that are partnering up, partnering up to do this. Okay. Um, is there any other campaign issues that I haven't asked you about that um, you want to highlight? I, I, I would just like to go back to um, the dark store. Please. Um, I went down to um, Madison, to the state, and um, testified on behalf of Washington County and the residents and the business owners and the, you know uh, to uh, have a stop put to the dark store and we need the legislation to make it make it happen and okay. uh, from what I told it looks like there's a good chance it's gonna uh, pass at the assembly and I mean at the, at the Senate uh, and I'm going to also if elected uh, push real hard to get it passed at the assembly. Um, two final questions what's the biggest need of the 58th assembly district? Rick. Well, um, first off, we need to continue to invest in our schools so parents can have the choice of where they want to send their children for the best education. Um, we need to um, also, you know, keep uh, taxes low uh, like we have been doing so we can encourage business and encourage growth. Um, we also need to um, continue to work for the seniors and the aging population like I have as chairman of the ADRC, mm -hmm. Aging and Disability Resource Center, and also the opioid issue still needs to be addressed and we need to take a strong heart uh, push on that. And the final question, do you want to highlight any differences between you and your opponents in the December 19th primary? Well, uh, all of them will say that they are conservatives, very conservatives, but none of them have uh, served in office. I am a conservative, and I'm a conservative leader who has, has a, a proven track record of success of getting things accomplished. Um, uh, make a smaller government, uh, we've accomplished that. Um, we um, are working on the opioid. Uh, the tax rate again is the lowest it's been in almost, uh, well it goes back to uh, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, and in the last 10 years, we've had the lowest tax levy. And as far as the tax rate is concerned, uh, Governor Walker did uh, challenge uh, counties and municipalities to try and lower their, their tax rate uh, to the levels of 2010. Well, we exceeded that by a long shot. So I, I feel very proud of that. Um, there's uh, 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 the uh, issue uh, regarding, as I mentioned, the opioids. Um, so. Um, I've, uh, oh, the merger of our health department with the Ozaukee counties. Oh. Um, I did go down uh, and work with uh, uh, the state uh, representatives and uh, on getting the legislation changed so that we could pull this off. And it, and it was a good move because we have successfully uh, merged our two health departments, uh, saving money 
and increasing the level of service that it had been pro pro providing in the past. So, mm, Thank you. Rick Gunderman Slinger is one of four Republican candidates in the December 19th primary in the 58th Assembly District. Mr. Gundrum, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you.